Catchments are where rainwater collects and eventually flows into rivers, lakes or the sea. Part of it seeps into groundwater. People, land and water in catchments are tied together in an intricate web of relationships. How water and land are used in upper catchments determines the quantity and quality of water available to those living downstream. But most people living in catchments don't realize this. Each one thinks only in terms of his or her own land, cattle and survival. Theme 2, the water and people in catchments, is about all the ways that people manage water between the plot scale and the basin scale. And they manage it collectively and individually at community level, between neighbors, maybe at sub-catchment scale. A good example comes from the Fucane Basin in Colombia, part of the Andean system of river basins. Lake Fucane receives its water from the Paramo, a neotropical ecosystem found in the high Andes. In this delicate environment, subsistence farmers grow potatoes, triggering downstream problems. Less water flows down, and what does come is full of pesticides and fertilizers. An action research project supported by the Challenge Program is trying to understand all the parties and interests involved. The first challenge that we are addressing is to identify who the different stakeholders are at different scales, what are their interests, and how, we, how they can best be engaged in the process of collective management. The project convenes small group meetings, like this one, trying to show everyone how things are closely interlinked. As people better understand the water balances and flows, their attitudes are slowly changing. Se ha venido bajando la pesca. ¿Y usted sabe por qué? Sí, por la, por la contaminación. Pues sí, hemos llegado a, a, a trabajar ya con la, la, los, de, la, parte, de, la parte alta. Finding lasting solutions to these entrenched problems will take time and effort. But modest beginnings are being made. And not just in the Andean Basin. Upstream downstream issues are being addressed in several other benchmark river basins. For example, upstream soil erosion has turned the Yellow River into one of the most sediment-laden rivers in the world. A challenge program project on conservation agriculture is slowly reversing this trend. Among the methods being promoted are using mulch on farmlands and growing cover crops. Reducing or eliminating ploughing is also being encouraged. And in the San Francisco River Basin, researchers are working with many different users of small-scale reservoirs to understand how each one's actions impacts the others. One of the main lessons emerging from the theme is that it's not really about taking a particular technology or practice from one basin to another, though that might happen. What's really important is taking the process of collective management from one basin to another. What's important is that the stakeholders in a particular basin can come together and determine what works for them. What's been attempted in these and other locations is a more equitable sharing of water and land resources. As more and more communities are finding out, when it comes to fresh water, everybody lives downstream of somebody else. <laughs>Rivers, lakes, reservoirs and wetlands. Collectively, these are known as aquatic ecosystems. They provide food, jobs and incomes for over 250 million people worldwide. Half of them are engaged in inland fishing. The fish they catch is the main or only source of protein for their families. And most of them are very poor and marginalized. Their needs are often ignored when decisions are made on how aquatic systems are used. So this team three on aquatic ecosystem and fisheries of challenge program and water and food tried to enhance the contribution of aquatic ecosystems and fisheries to the food, nutrition and livelihood security of the people around the world, especially the developing world. This thematic area seeks to improve water productivity 
through the sustainable use of aquatic systems. That's a tall order, considering we still don't understand much about these complex ecosystems or the range of services and benefits they provide. The task is made harder by the enormous diversity involved. Each aquatic system is unique. The priority number one is developing appropriate valuation techniques and governance tools so that the fisheries resources can be managed on an environmentally sustainable and socially equitable manner. It's never easy to put a price on what nature provides. But in recent years, scientists have devised ways to assign values to natural systems and services that we've taken for granted all these years. The ecological services from aquatic systems are not limited to food and water. They protect nearby lands from erosion, siltation, storm damage, floods and droughts. And wetlands also support a good deal of tourism and recreation. We are in South Africa, where one-sixth of the Limpopo River Basin is covered by wetlands. These are the source of life for millions who live here. They provide a defence against the impact of frequent droughts and also help control occasional floods. But very little is known and understood on how human activity impacts these wetlands. This is the Mefefi village, 400 kilometres northwest of Pretoria. Scientists working with the Challenge Programme are collecting information to produce a detailed map of the Limpopo wetlands. The major objective of this program is to come up with a series of tools, guidelines and framework which can lead to development of a model whereby the stakeholders can select how to create balance in utilizing the wetland resources in such a way that can improve their standard of living in harmony with the uh, environmental parameters and characteristics. They are monitoring rainfall, groundwater levels and water flows into and out of the wetland. This information is then shared with the farmers. The project is studying how crop growing, animal rearing and fishing are impacting these wetlands. Based on this new knowledge, researchers plan to suggest better ways of managing aquatic resources. Another long-term goal under this theme is to find ways to maintain ecosystems while getting the best out of freshwater fish production. As part of this, farmers are being encouraged to mix farming practices with fish culture so that benefits from both areas can be increased. 